My name is Emily Smith and I am a fifth grade language arts and social justice teacher at Cunningham Elementary in Austin, Texas. I founded the Hive Society, which isn't a classroom, it's a place for children to grow and explore and learn and I really feel like the children have taken over the Hive Society and have made it their own. Did you know in some states you can't even own a pit bull? Because I think that it's pretty telling that you can own a tiger in Miami. There's never really a typical day in the Hive Society, which makes things really exciting. There is one constant though, and that's usually noise, but good noise. Uh, kids moving and bustling around and having deep conversations, interacting with each other, interacting with texts. I don't call them students, I call them scholars because they, their job is to learn. Giving them choice and a voice, that is another constant that you'll see in the Hive Society. We in the Hive have watched a lot of TED Talks and the kids were like, "Isn't that? wouldn't that be cool if we got to do it ourselves, like if we got to write one? And secretly I was you know, planning on them doing that anyway. So instead of being TED Talks, we called them Hive Talks to make them our own and, and personalize them. And the kids began brainstorming and I didn't quite know what that was gonna look like but the kids took control of it and um, I just kind of followed their lead. They were the ones that said, wouldn't that be cool if we got to do it? Like, are we gonna get to share our Hive Talks with, our, with the other blocks? Because I have three blocks. And so I met with my teammates who are beyond supportive and both of them said, sure, let's do a whole day where all the kids can be a part of this amazing experience. Now further along into the year, I never imagined that we'd be having a full day conference. Well, architecture is anything with any structural design. One interesting fact is that 86% of the Earth's species, pandas will do anything to have fun. They eat 100 bamboo sticks each day. Hi, I'm Mia. And I'm Sophia. Today we're going to be talking about soda. Most of you probably know that soda is bad for you. I got ready for my hive talk first. I wrote down a list of things that I really wanted to talk about. One of my friends, she said she wanted to join me because she thought my topics were um, cool. So once they came up with an idea, they began the brainstorming process. What do I need to research? What different components do I want to have in this hive talk? Research was very individualized. Each child took it upon themselves to go and search for the information that they felt they needed. Obviously, I was there to guide throughout that process and I met with small groups, honing how to find that information and where to find it. We usually just get our journals and we brainstorm and we see what we're really passionate about or what's really interesting to us. I had a dream one day about doing a TED Talk and I was just like, how do we get dreams? How does that happen? And then I was just like, ooh, that's an interesting topic. I choose to do it on the history of comics. I told him about the history of comics like in ancient Rome, to Japan, to France, and then to America. In 1983, the first DC comic was made. I just like comics in general and I'm like, uh, I have a whole bunch of comic books at my house and then like I wondered what about the history of comics? Basically each child was able to choose from their entire world, <laughs> their, all of their experiences. It doesn't necessarily have to be a new invention or a, a new idea. It can be something that a child is really passionate about and that they feel that they're really knowledgeable about and they want to share that knowledge with their friends. My favorite thing this year has been Hive Talks because I get to write about what I like and what I know about. I've learned how to um, do a speech in front of big people and how to get over the a fear of talking in front of big people. They allow us to express what we like. We get to use the technology a lot and we get to learn how to make a PowerPoint and we get to show off all of our skills. I think that the Hive Talks are important because 
There's not just one topic that we had to talk about. We could talk about anything we wanted at all. The kids, their brains are very imaginative. We've learned how to do, you know, different types of stop motion videos. We've learned how to voice record to log our literature circle conversations. I've found that some teachers are a little hesitant to give students more agency and that's an understandable fear or feeling. There's definitely a process leading up to that. We spend a lot of time at the beginning of the year talking about what we want the hive to look and feel like and then gradually over time the kids begin to realize that this is something that they have ownership in therefore they're more dedicated to their work they're working with each other they're taking care of each other I think the most important thing to remember about the Hive Society is that it's more than these four walls it leaves with the kids when they leave at the end of the day and it leaves with them when they go on to middle school I don't want this just to be their fifth grade year. I want this to be a much bigger part of them because they deserve that.